I'm Jay Pitts, a real estate broker, agent, leader, and investor. For the last decade, I've navigated the craziest of real estate markets this country has ever seen, selling over 2,000 homes, moving in and out of markets, always ahead of the curve. And now I'm bringing that perspective to you. This is your resource, and Real Talk About Real Estate starts right now. back, folks. Welcome to another episode of Resource Real Talk about Louisville Real Estate. I am your host, Jay Pitts, broker owner at REMAX Premier Properties, leader at JT Pitts and Associates. Before we get started, let's just give you, give you all the rundown on where you can find the podcast. Once again, you can join our private Facebook group. It is searchable. You can request access. And if you are a Louisville agent, a real estate agent in the Louisville metro area will be happy to get you added to all the conversation that happens behind the scenes. You can find the podcast also on iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and iHeart. It's coming soon to Amazon Podcasts, Seth. Hopefully I didn't get out of line on you on that one. But uh, also facebook.com slash the resource podcast for clips and links to full episodes. You can also find us on youtube.com slash Realtor. There is a resource uh, playlist within our YouTube channel that has all of our episodes, full-length episodes of the podcast. Yes, it is a video, not just an audio show. You can also find me on Twitter and Instagram at Realtor. trying to be a little more active on Twitter these days. It, you know, went from what I had for breakfast to serious political uh, fights and now is kind of seemingly coming full circle as a distribution platform for content. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. You might hear what I had for breakfast if you follow me on Twitter. That's at J Pitts Realtor. Also on Instagram for reels and posts about business, my kids, travel baseball, maybe a trip to Disney World here and there, not in the last 12 months, but maybe soon, who knows, we will see. Uh, Also, please pay attention to our new piece of content that we are about three weeks into. You will see another episode go live alongside this one. It's a companion piece, JTP University. That is our tactical answer for how to kind of, you know, follow the trends in real estate, how to kind of navigate where we are and how to be successful. Little tips, five-minute episodes, incredibly tactical and to the point, um, kind of gets you a little change of pace as you know compared to the big kind of overarching thematic kind of you know themes that we we touch on here on the resource podcast. So uh, once again, you'll get one of those weekly. It'll launch alongside this particular podcast. We're trying to drive two pieces of content per week, and there may be more where that came from soon. Anyway, so let's get into today, to today's topic. Uh, we I feel like we've been a little narrow in our scope lately. Uh, we've been talking about how to succeed in today's market given the unprecedented conditions that we have been, you know, dealt, the hand we've been dealt, how to play those cards. That's where we've been, we've been, you know, into the things you need to do to engage your sphere of influence, to get more listings, what's the market doing, how to win multiple offer situations, how to negotiate and set proper expectations, how to communicate with seriously um, contentious times in a negotiation. Uh, And it's just a lot. It's just a lot. So today, I I had a kind of a lightning bolt moment uh, over the weekend, and something hit me. It was actually something my my brother brought to my attention. And uh, those of you that don't know, my brother is a partner. He doesn't listen to this podcast, um, so I can pretty much say anything I want about him at this point, and he'll never know unless you tell him, because he gets tired of hearing my voice. Go figure. Um, when you're a member of this company, uh, you get to hear it a little bit, just to be fair. And he lives with me, and he's heard all my BS before. He's heard a lot of my BS before it was even mine, because it came from you know, it came from our father. We got to learn it growing up. Uh, 
So needless to say, uh, he's not the biggest fan of the podcast. He's proud that I do it. He's happy that it helps our business. Um, in the ways that it does, he's happy that I get to do the things that I enjoy, but he doesn't have to listen to it. He's kind of like my wife in that respect. She gets to hear my, hear my voice enough also. So uh, just know that going forward, if I make comments about them, it's because these are comments that are pretty much uh, can be made with impunity because they're not going to listen. So, uh, But he brought up to me nonetheless um, in, in, a, in a, you know, a soul-searching moment the idea um, that I'm going to share with you here in a moment, um, that's kind of the relationship I have with my brother, right? We, we, uh, we get along pretty well. We've always been pretty close. And we fight like crazy, and we get over fights like in 30 seconds. My wife, as our third business partner, can't hardly handle it. Like If she gets angry, it takes days. Um, to get past, but Zach and I somehow we can yell and scream at each other, take it to levels that no one ever saw coming. And 30 seconds later, it's like, you want to get a beer or (laughs) what what are we doing? What's next? What's happening? Um, so, but nevertheless, he brought this idea and it kind of launched me down a path. And so today I'm going to talk to you about four phrases that top agents avoid at all costs. Now, I'm not going to say they never use them. Uh, in fact, if you could look at my, at my notebook here, there's some scratch outs where that's the first thing I wrote. But it's not that they never use them. Uh, they do use them, and they should use them when appropriate. But these four phrases are things that top agents avoid at all costs. And I phrase it that way on purpose because when it is necessary, these should be used. But when they are necessary, something has gone wrong. And these are also phrases that I think new agents, lesser experienced agents, less agents with lesser credibility, find themselves compelled to use often, often and oftentimes in inappropriate means and circumstances. So it doesn't occur to you, most people get into real estate because they wanna help people, because they're entrepreneurial, because they like to make their own schedule, take responsibility for their own outcomes, Uh, They like the freedom to do so, the freedom to make choices, the freedom to have impact. They like seeing people succeed, seeing people smile. They have the best of intentions, right? They're empathetic individuals, self-starting probably a little bit. Uh, Maybe they love design or maybe they love investing or maybe they love architecture. But there are a number of notions of sentiments that draw people to this career. And those very same sentiments, those very same notions, lead people in the business to overuse the following four phrases, ideas, concepts. And I'm going to talk to you about them today. And the first one is the one that launched me down this path and and considering and identifying. And there's a long list of things that I wrote down, deleted, scratched out, edited, altered, et cetera, to come to these four. Um, If you're a listener of the podcast, you know I tend to like lists of five. I also don't like when the the zones of the HVAC, the, the heating and cooling in the car, are on different temperatures. I also don't like when, if there's just one, it's on an odd number. 67 degrees, 71 degrees, 73 degrees, that don't, that don't play in my car. It's 70, or it's 72, or it's 68. And when my wife cranks her side up to 84, when mine's at 70, that really bothers the hell out of me too. But I digress. Um, the first topic that launched me down... <laughs> This discussion, you're going to get the four because the four is really the ones that I want to talk about. Um, and yes, I do realize that I've been going for 10 minutes and, and withholding the, the true topic. But 
Zach brought this up to me and he sent me like one of those memes or it was like an inspirational quote or something. And it, the gist of it was, is that we shouldn't go through life and by connection, our career and by connection to that, our career in real estate and our ability to work with our clients with a have to mentality. I have to work an open house this weekend. I have to get an offer on this listing. I have to get a price reduction. I have to win the multiple offer. I have to sell 30 homes this year. I have to build a team. Have to. You're reticent. You are held back by these ideas. Have to. Have to. You get to, okay? Regardless of the challenge that any of us has, have endured in the last 12 months or in our entire career and life in general, we still live in the freest country on the planet, in the freest economy on the planet, where we get to help people buy and sell real estate and make really good money doing it, or at least we aspire to. And we are aware of people who have had great success doing exactly what we aim to do or are currently doing. So we at least know that we get to be in the real estate business. You can go a little more micro and say, we get to be an essential business and go to work when other when restaurants get shut down at Thanksgiving and before that last, last March. We get to have a career that is flourishing, an industry that is growing. Yes, there are challenges. Yes, we've got to fight off multiple offers. But we get to. Get to says can. Have to says can't. And if you know me very well, you've probably heard the quote, that you must first be inspired before you can be inspirational. And that doesn't mean that you have to be a leader amongst your peers. And, and, and in order to be that inspirational, being inspirational is required. No, you must inspire your clients. You must be inspirational for them to help them avoid the challenges that come part and parcel to pursuing their goals, their dreams, their aspirations. And in order to do that, you must first be inspired. And let me say this, have to doesn't inspire anyone. Get to is inspirational. Have to says can't, get to says can. Be the inspiration that your client your client needs. Number two, I don't have time. I don't have time. And this is kind of inexplicably connected to the next one, but I'm going to stay here for a moment. I don't have time doesn't inspire anyone. This is could be one of a number of similar statements. Um, You know, recording a podcast by yourself is often like having a conversation with someone who isn't there. And um, (laughs) it feels a little out of body at times because sometimes I want to answer my own questions, and in fact, I do. But I don't have time... um, essentially presumes that the person you're telling that you don't have time to do whatever, I don't have time to show you that house today, I don't have time to get this offer in before the deadline, I don't have time to call the appraiser this afternoon, I don't have time to negotiate that deal, I don't have time to make it to soccer practice if you're talking to your spouse. It presumes that the person you're talking to actually cares. Now, 
I'm the biggest proponent of working pe- with people that you know, like, trust, even love in some cases. People that are incredibly important to you because there's nothing like delivering results to those who care about you deeply when they really need it. So don't get me wrong. They care sometimes about who you are and what you are. But no one, no one cares, save maybe your spouse and, spouse and your children and your parents, your siblings, may, maybe. But I think an argument can even be made that no one cares about you more than they care about themselves. I mean, there's probably four people in my life. Think about the people you'd lay down your life for, and that's probably who cares about you more than they care about themselves. So trust me, your clients aren't laying down their life for you. They don't care about you more than they care about themselves, and they have real things of their own to consider. And I don't have time equals you don't get to be their agent anymore. You know, what comes to mind are words like priorities, control, poise, confidence. Because ultimately, I don't have time might as well be rephrased as I am not prepared. Sacrifices can get made. Ahead of time, preparation can be made to ensure that time is available. Or, you're just not that important to me. And trust me, they know it. They know it. They know I don't have time doesn't mean I don't have time. So, consider that. Before you utter these words, because people know what you really mean. Number three, I did my best. So I don't have time happens before the disappointment, and I did my best comes after the disappointment. I did my best might as well mean I'm just not good enough. And I apologize in advance. And actually, you know what? I'm not going to do that. You'll, You'll find out why soon. I hate it that this may be a bitter pill for some of you to swallow. This may be a look in the mirror that you don't feel like making right about now. But I did my best is another one of those phrases that invokes and assumes that someone cares about you more than they care about themselves. Now, that doesn't mean that you're going to get fired. Okay, because your best wasn't good enough. But the truth is people care about themselves more than they care about you. And by extension, the results you deliver for them and the transactional nature of the relationship is what really, really, really matters. Now, they'll write you a five-star review and they'll shout you out on Facebook and tag you and they'll take a picture with your silly little sign. (laughs) I'm just joking. The, 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 the signs are great. Um, they'll take a picture with the sign. They'll do all the things to support your business. Okay? But this process is full of very real disappointment for people. People are losing out on offers at a rate that I've never seen before. The, the offer to acceptance ratio is disparate like I've never witnessed. There's a lot of disappointment attached to the process now, yes or no? Yes is definitely the answer. Lots of disappointment. I did my best is not good enough. 
Your best is not good enough because if your best was good enough, you wouldn't say I did my best because they would already know it and they would be told by your results. Now, am I saying right now that you have to win every single time or you're going to lose all your clients and you're going to be a big POS and you're going to be out of the business? And No, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is don't say the words, I did my best. Don't say the words, I did my best. Number four. I'm sorry. No, you're not. You're not sorry. I stopped myself a minute ago, and this is proof positive that anyone, even the person delivering this message to you, can feel the empathy. Because you're a good person, and you have empathy for someone's lack of success, from, for their disappointment. You can feel it. You will feel it. That's why you got into the business is because you care about people. And trust me, they know it. I felt bad a minute ago telling you the first three statements on this list, the first three phrases that I'm asking you to voice. So I said, I'm sorry if this is a bitter pill to swallow, but you know what? I'm not sorry. I'm doing exactly what I feel like I need to do right now, but I still feel bad for the fact that people need to hear this and it's not going to be easy. How do you overcome that? You overcome it by scheduling, by having priorities, having control, having poise, having confidence, educating, giving people the opportunity to see you in your element. Be the top agent that avoids these phrases. I'm sorry is permission to blame. I'm going to be I'm going to let that sink in for a moment. Do you apologize for something that's not your fault? Do you say that you don't have time if you know you're not inherently disappointing someone? Do you say I did my best if unless you know that your best wasn't good enough? Do you say I have to versus I get to except for moments where you're perfectly comfortable letting someone be less than inspired by you and your energy? Do you say those things? The answer is no. Because I'm sorry is permission to blame. Learning how to be comfortable amidst uncomfortable circumstances is a skill that has to be developed a skill that will set you apart. You get there by understanding how to meet a client's needs, but first knowing what they are, being a good listener, understanding how to have proper priorities, how to control yourself in the midst of those things, Exhibiting the poise and the confidence that they expect to see from someone. Having a get-to attitude. And I will get to it versus I don't have time for it. A winner's mentality versus an I did my best and that should be okay attitude. And... Helping people understand that when they miss out, when they fall short, but you did everything you should have done, they need to know that. They won't know it if you're apologizing for the result. Agents, do you guarantee results? Is it written anywhere in your listing contract? 
As- aside from the I'll buy your house in 90 days if it doesn't sell bogus marketing ploy that you see out there sometimes, there is no guaranteed sale. There is no guarantee that the buyer will win the multiple offer situation on their dream home. Disappointment should be expected at some point in the process. Top agents know this. They set it, they set expectations for it. They say, there may come a time where you're supremely disappointed with how this is going. But no matter what else happens, I need you to understand that you are in good hands and that at the end of it all, you will feel like everything happened the way that it should and for a reason. That is how you win a lasting business in this career, in this industry. How you build the credibility and the trust that transcends decades. You know, if you don't like the the direction the industry's headed, the the Zillows and the Op Cities and the Realtor.coms and the, you know, power dialing, expired FISBO, expensive coaching, crazy marketing, look at me, social media branding, 500 bazillion reviews on every engine to just get yourself an opportunity to differentiate yourself. Do one thing. Do this. Build that trust. Build that confidence, build that credibility, and you'll never want for business, ever. (laughs) And, you know, just to put a nice little bow on this, considering the fact that today I've been lecturing a bit, um, here's here's two bonus, two bonus things not to say. If you're a team leader, don't call them your buyer's agent. Don't take ownership, my buyer's agent. Don't take ownership of that person that works for you. And don't set them up for failure by making them subservient to you the first instant you ever talk to a client. Don't do that to them. People join a team to be a business partner. Introduce your business partner, not your buyer's agent. And if you don't, you may not have a team for very long. But the hey, you know what? Most team leads aren't good business people and aren't good leaders. They're just above average real estate agents. So, um, you know, to each their own, they'll get what they deserve. And one last thing, please, pretty please, don't say realtor. Realtor. I have a big pet peeve for that one. Realtor. Realtor. Anyway, I I, I guess it's going to be a lecture today no matter what. Uh, I apologize uh, or I shouldn't, I shouldn't because I see, I did it again. Damn it. Um, I hope you weren't offended today. I hope you learned something. But, uh, with that one more, uh, one more quick plug, uh, since I lectured you ad nauseum today, why don't you hop on over to iTunes and give us a five-star review. Uh, you can call me a jerk. That's fine. Put it in the notes. Just make it, make sure it says five stars. That's the only kind we like. <laughs> No, seriously, if you like the uh, the content that we put out, uh, do us a favor, smash that subscribe button on iTunes. Uh, once again, you can get access to our Facebook group. I promise the conversations are not always this dark. Um, actually, I'm about to put up a little bit, an article here in just a moment from DS News that's a little contrary to the, to the uh, story we've been led to believe about the Louisville real estate market, just as a caveat to give you a reason to ask for access. Uh, once again, iTunes, five-star reviews only, please. Smash that subscribe button. Find full episodes of this podcast and also the JTP University Companion five-minute episodes. We have three, soon to be four episodes up on there. You can find us on Spotify also. You can just search my name, Jay Pitts, or Resource, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, iHeartRadio as well. Uh, facebook.com slash the resource podcast for clips and links to full episodes. Also youtube.com slash J Pitts realtor. There is a playlist there with all the full episodes of the resource podcast at J Pitts realtor on Twitter for my breakfast menu and Instagram at J Pitts realtor for reels uh, snippets of the show and other little 
kind of dicey morsels of real estate content. Once again, I sincerely appreciate you, and I promise not to lecture next week. If you come back, pretty please. We will see you soon. Once again, for resource, real talk about Louisville real estate. I am your host, Jay Pitts. Next Wednesday, we'll see you soon.